In Nuke news, another day, another ominous development in Fukushima. According to new numbers from the Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, the plant's operator, as many as 10% of that nuclear facility's containers may be leaking radioactive waste. And while the release of toxic chemicals into the environment is bad enough, this new problem comes with an added risk. It could cause a violent explosion. As one nuclear official told The Telegraph, since the leak was thought to be caused by a hydrogen buildup, quote, if the concentration level is high, a spark caused by static electricity could cause the container to explode. TEPCO, for its part, says there's no risk of an explosion right now, but the fact that we're still talking about what else could go wrong four years after Fukushima melted down is a story in and of itself. And with me now for more on all this is Paul Gunter, director of the Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. Paul, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. It's great to have you with us. So what's going on here? Well, <clears throat> this is uh, no another development. Uh, we have the Advanced Liquid Processing System, it is called. This is what's uh, filtering out all the radioactivity in th these uh, hundreds of tons every day of radioactive water that are washing over these melted reactor cores and they're filtering out the, some of the radioactivity. This is creating sludge on the bottom of these tanks that is not only extremely radioactive but it's also chemically reactive and it's generating hydrogen gas mm. and now we find that uh, some of these tanks in this so-called advanced system were n never installed relief valves. Uh, some of the relief valves on these tanks uh, are not operating. And in fact, we're now uh, we're seeing evidence that some of these tanks have reached uh, levels of hydrogen gas that would explode if exposed to a spark or a flame. Shades of the Hindenburg at Fukushima. And the big concern here is that, you know, we have a situation where if these tanks explode, uh, it would also spread radioactivity um, in greater concentrations, likely denying bigger areas of the plant to uh, where workers could actually get in there. And, and so, uh, you know, shrouding this reactor site uh, in more radioactivity, uh, you know, it's amazing. We're still, uh, you know, seeing an accident completely out of control. Uh, four years after the the the, the initial explosions, right. and 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 they are still leaking radiation into the Pacific Ocean, are they not? Hundreds of tons a day. I mean, th this is um, we see about on average about 300 tons by their estimates. But clearly, uh, the groundwater movement is is taking um, a toll that is uh, both unpredictable and uncertain. And you know. Just a couple of days ago, the uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company uh, confirmed that radioactivity in the port area of Fukushima Daiichi is at ho the highest level of radioactive um, contamination that it's ever been at. Hmm. So we continue to see the radioactivity levels uh, in the Pacific Ocean there, right at the plant, uh, escalating and without you know without really any prior precedent this this is an accident that's really out of control wow wow um, what should TEPCO be doing what should TEPCO be doing I think that it's uh, a big concern right now that um, there really isn't any um, measured response we don't know exactly what to do uh, you know TEPCO clearly has to uh, Open the um, open the country up uh, to international uh, aid, but you know, Tom, the the problem is is that this accident is beyond any technology right now. Um, TEPCO admitted that trying to get at that radioactive um, core in in these three units that is melted down, that technology does not exist today and may not exist for hundreds of years. Wow. So this is why we really shouldn't have nuclear power anywhere in the world right now, isn't it? I mean, it's a case, case study. Um, uh, and we have just a minute left. Are, is the, uh, we've talked about this before, is the uh, uh, radiation from Fukushima now clearly showing up in the United States? The radiation is moving in a plume down the, 
uh, around uh, the coast of Alaska, down uh, British Columbia, mm -hmm. and um, you know we're we're looking for signs of uh, trace amounts of cesium-137, 134, uh, especially the cesium-134. That's going to be the Fukushima signature, and we fully anticipate that it will turn up. Um, on, on the West Coast. Wow, amazing stuff. Uh, Paul Gunter, it's always great to have you with Thank us. Thank you again, thanks, Tom. Thanks so much, Paul. Officials at Fukushima Daiichi have given more details about last week's leak of highly radioactive water. They say they had concerns about the hose that caused the leak, well, but workers didn't replace it because they were busy with other projects. Uh, authorities at Tokyo Electric Power Company found out about the problem on Friday. They say a cracked hose caused as much as 15 tons of water to seep into a drainage channel. The water then leaked into the port that's managed by the plant. Workers tested the water and found the highest levels of radioactive substances since they began checking the port two years ago. Officials say the crack in the hose was caused by excessive bending. Those concerns had led them to replace similar equipment. TEPCO officials say they'll speed up the work. They're also putting together a manual to make sure the hoses receive proper checks. A nuclear reactor in southwestern Japan has become the first to meet new government guidelines. They were put in place after the 2011 disaster at Fukushima Daiichi. The operator of the Sendai plant in Kagoshima Prefecture says restarting the reactor is likely to be delayed due to logistical problems. Officials at Kyushu Electric Power Company say they now expect to resume operations at the number one reactor in mid-August or later. The utility previously aimed for late July. Required inspections began in March. Before the restart, Japan's nuclear regulator needs to check the facility's severe accident protocols. The company notes it now plans to load nuclear fuel into the reactor early July. None of Japan's 43 reactors are currently online. Japan's meteorological agency says a volcano in Kagoshima Prefecture, southwestern Japan, could remain active for a long time. A major eruption hit the island of Kuchino Erabu on Friday last week. Volan volcanic activity has continued, prompting the agency to keep the alert at the highest level of five. All residents have been evacuated from the island. Agency officials say it's been difficult to obtain sufficient data. The crater of Mount Shindake is shrouded by clouds and smoke. The rainy season started in the area on Tuesday, further reducing visibility. Thunderstorms are forecast for Wednesday. Lightning has caused a power outage, making it impossible to get readings from seismometers and other monitoring equipment. The agency's seismologists have observed earthquakes in the area. They say most of the magma that accumulated beneath the mountain is still there. This means there could be more powerful eruptions, and the volcano could remain active for a long period. Industry ministry officials have been discussing the nation's energy mix with a group of experts since January. The panel has now endorsed the final draft plan for fiscal 2030. The plan cuts the country's reliance on nuclear power to levels lower than before the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident. Ministry officials submitted the final proposal on Monday. The plan says nuclear power should contribute 20 to 22 percent of total energy. The figure was about 28 percent before the Fukushima accident. It also calls for Japan to more than double its reliance on renewable energy sources to up to 24 percent. Renewables accounted for about 10 percent of total supply in fiscal 2013. Some of the panel's experts called for less nuclear and more renewables, but the plan was approved. Ministry officials uh, say they will collect comments from the public and officially decide on the energy plan as early as July. It's great news when a nation goes to great lengths to switch to green energy, but it's bigger news when they also get away from nuclear. Last week, France's lower house of parliament approved a bill that works on both of those admirable goals. Later this year, the United Nations Conference on Climate Change is being held in that nation's capital, and so France wants to lead by example. This legislation sets a more ambitious goal for reducing greenhouse gas emissions by at least 40% by 2030, and it aims to reduce reliance on nuclear energy by 50% within 10 years. Considering that our nation relies on nuclear for 75, excuse me, considering that that nation relies on nuclear for 75% of all of its energy needs, 
That goal would be huge news in the fight against nuclear. Japanese government officials have decided to aim for a 26% reduction compared to 2013 levels in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. A government task force on climate change made the decision on Tuesday. Prime Minister Abe says the country's target is ambitious and on a par with international standards. The reduction target gives shape to my administration's goal to reduce Japan's nuclear power dependence as much as possible, while introducing significant energy savings and sources of renewable energy. Abe also said Japan is determined to lead global debate in the run-up to the UN climate change conference scheduled at the year end. Cuts in carbon dioxide emissions from power plants and corporate activities are expected to make up the bulk of the reduction, or nearly 22 of the planned 26 percent. The remainder is to be achieved through cuts in other greenhouse gases and by counting CO2 absorption by forests and farmland. The government plans to solicit public opinion for about a month and present the target to the UN possibly in July.